Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Norm. I'm Adam. Adam, it's really good to see you, man. It is really good to see you, man. Um, I am. Uh, we're recording this on this day, the day you're listening to it. If you're listening to it when it came out on Tuesday, and and last night, our our friend and uh, my colleague, MythBusters colleague, and industrial light and magic colleague, Grant Namahara, passed away. Um, and it is, uh, I have been texting nonstop for the past 14 hours with hundreds of people. And uh, it's just feeling super important to have contact with people that I love and know and work with. And like all of that contact feels really, really important right now. Yeah. I'm so sorry for your loss. I mean, (laughs) it's it's so sudden. It's... Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, I, I didn't know Grant as well as you. I only met him, you know, some couple of times a year at things like San Diego Comic-Con or, or Dragon Con. And I know um, even outside of Mythbusters, he was, we had a lot, you know, our, our friend circles bend and yeah. uh, he was such a, a massive, you know, fan and geek of all the things that we love. And um, I just love to, you know, hear about, to hear stories that yeah that well i mean him. it's so it's i was on a zoom last night with 50 or 60 of grant's friends from across the 22 or 23 years that i've known him uh my friend don bees uh actually has known grant since 93 wow and shared some stories and the thing is is that grant was among my among all of my co-hosts on Mythbusters, the one who was the most, like, most exactly like me in our geekdom. Um, we loved the cosplay. We loved the props. We loved the, we loved all the things about it. And we loved it when we were working at ILM. We were, we, you know, we were super, super, uh, 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 super geeks even back then. Um, you know, the thing that I woke up remembering is that Grant and I, uh, we bonded early over our mutual love of those things. I remember I actually, I went and saw the matrix three times in the theaters when it came out and uh, Grant came with me, I think the second or third time because I just called him up on Saturday and be like matrix. He's like, yeah, let's do it. Um, and part of that bond was a mutual respect for, for, uh, for the love of engineering and aesthetics and all the things that we liked to do. And so we called each other doctor. And it was like an honorific we gave each other and we never didn't call each other doctor. You know, I'd see him at sometimes I wouldn't see him for six or eight months. And then I'd see him at a party at Comic-Con doctor, doctor. And I just, that, that call and response, doctor, doctor, uh, that reminds me, that's just, that's Grant. That's Grant to me. Um, when he finally obtained, uh, there's a Holy Grail costume that's so hard to get, which is the flight suit from Battlestar Galactica, because that green sheen fabric is like you can only buy it in giant lots, and it's very hard to find a suit made of the correct fabric. And when Grant obtained his, he came over to Jamie's shop wearing it, and I was like, "My family, we understand each other." Um, and, did you, you guys know, work on the same models on episode two or any of the same same projects see. there? We worked on uh, we worked on uh, I'll work backwards. We worked on uh, Terminator Three was the last job I think both he and I worked on at ILM, uh, and uh, Fawn Davis and I built this giant particle accelerator. Uh, Peter Rubin was our art director, and Grant did electronics on that. Um, the thing was was that. There were a few electronics guys at ILM, and Grant was one of them, but he was also a top-notch model maker. Uh, and like all the impressions that the public has of Grant of being generous and sweet and self-effacing and humble, like that's how Grant has been the entire time I've known him. Um, so working with him was really fun. We worked on Galaxy Quest uh, together. He did some, he did, gave me some advice about lighting a piece I was working on, but he designed this really cool thing for Galaxy Quest for the, uh, the main ship for mm-hmm. Galaxy Quest. 
um, he designed an LED engine nacelle that had a program for making the nacelles glow, which he got approval, like he designed the program to make them glow in a specific way. And then the program could cycle that glowing sequence frame by frame for the motion control shots oh, of wow. the ship. And that was like, that was Grant inventing a technology with the motion control department to like make the shot work. That wasn't a thing you could pull off of a shelf. Yeah. Um, he also designed two different engine nacelle uh, lighting sequences for Galaxy Quest because for the fake opening of the Galaxy Quest television show within the movie, ILM built a shitty ship. They built the crappy one and he did the like crude lighting for that. And then for the real ship, he did this really beautiful, beautiful, sh uh, beautiful stuff with blue LEDs. And I remember the blue LEDs cost a fortune back then. It was really hard for him to source them. Um, back then he was always working on uh, dead blow his robot uh, from the very first battle bots the very first broadcast of battle bots in, included dead blow um and i told this story on the zoom meeting last night uh famous people were always touring through the model shop um because it was the sexy place to take visitors at ilm you know you could take them to a bunch of computer rooms where people had action figures lined up on the walls and those were my friends and they were awesome but <laughs> you weren't really seeing the magic happen until you went to the model shop and you saw animatronics and the ships hanging from the ceiling and so that was always like the 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 last bit of the tour for famous people and sean penn came through clint eastwood you know like everyone sort of everyone made their way through the model shop and we all, you know, sort of would see them out of the corner of our eye. And the, the instruction was don't engage and like kind of be, be, be allow them their space. Uh, and then I think it was on episode two in sync was recording an album at Skywalker sound and the band members of in sync did a cameo in episode two for George, and then they got a tour of the model shop. Now, this is the entirety of InSync except for Justin Timberlake. He was not okay. on this tour. But InSync is being led through the model shop, and they get to Grant's desk, and they all collectively go, oh, dead blow. And then they, you watch them all look up and go, Grant and Mahara, and they all took <laughs> pictures of Grant and Mahara because they were super fans of BattleBots. Wow. I loved that moment. I mean, that was like, yeah. Um, Jamie and I wanted Grant to be uh, one of the Mythbusters in the second season when we expanded the, the hosts. Um, and it wasn't until the third season that, that he was hired when Scotty Chapman left. Um, but, you know, he was such an amazing and wonderful addition to the team. He's got such a gentle manner. Um, I will say I have seen Grant stressed. I've seen him have a rough day and, you know, he was one of those people that didn't spread it around. Uh, you know, he was very self-contained and very respectful uh, and very easy to work with uh, in my experience. I just, I love that guy, and when uh, when those beautiful when that beautiful footage came out of the baby Yoda that he's been working on yeah. for the last few months, when some of the first shots of that came out, that was the last time we communicated. I texted him that morning. I woke up and saw baby Yoda, and I just was like, "Dude, this is a masterpiece! What a beautiful thing!" And he just texted back and said, "Thank you." And uh, I you know I had no idea. You have no idea that you're going to lose somebody that fast. Yeah, yeah. It's, and he, he was working at you know Disney, mm -hmm. um, doing those uh, for for Disneyland that new show with the uh, the the uh, the bungee jumping or the trapeze robots. The so, robots hitting yeah. poses in midair. Yeah, yes. I, yeah. He was loving that work. He was really having. He just loved doing that work. And I've gotten contacted by a couple of people from his from his Disney team telling me how sad they are and also how amazing he was as a colleague and uh, a, a collaborator. Yeah. I mean, both him being on Mythbusters and also in working at ILM, I remember because, you know, we've talked about, yeah, the Sculpting Galaxies, the coffee table book, Lauren Peterson yeah. wrote. In the back, they have photos of all the ILM model makers and both you and him are there. And 
I remember making that connection the first time, but he worked like, like you, he was both on the show and worked at ILM and, yeah. you know, growing up watching that show, those are just big inspirations being a fan of movies and of, of the show, you know, his representation on, on television, I don't think we fully processed yet, but, you know, certainly for me and my family, it was one of the reasons that we watched the show together as a family uh, was because, you know, he was on the show as another Asian person. Yeah. Oh, it's such a loss. You know, do you know what I think a lot of people don't realize about Grant is that he was an unbelievable impressionist of people. Um, and it was like, even back at ILM, Grant would do impressions of our coworkers and, and I won't name them because he did all sorts of them for all sorts of different people. But Grant, it came up with this. Grant <laughs> did the, the Jamie mustache that I've been doing forever. I've always credited him. That's Grant's joke. Uh, I mean, you know, and there was such a generosity behind that too. Like when he would do impressions because he had an impression of me too. Um, but it was always filled with love. Um, yeah, and Grant came at ILM Model Shop from a really interesting perspective. He was uh, he was he studied sound engineering and electrical engineering at USC, uh, and got did an internship I think up at Lucasfilm in the early '90s, and then got hired at Skywalker Sound. And he was working at Skywalker Sound when Don Bees was running the archives and. Uh, this is the early 90s, mid 90s. And uh, Don discovered that uh, Grant not only had uh, had electronic chops, but really loved working on the props. So Grant did some work on getting one of the R2-D2s running. Mm -hmm. And then when Don had to build a whole bunch of uh, uh, appearance Darth Vader costumes for Lucasfilm, Grant did the electronics work on that and a bunch of the model making and eventually matriculated from Skywalker Sound over into the model shop. Not a common career course at ILM. Yeah. Um, and part of that, I think, was really informed by the fact that uh, in addition to being an incredible collaborator and contributor to the wizardry that, that ILM was famous for, he also, like me, was a dyed-in-the-wool geek who grew up like um, um, eating all of the information he could about ILM and the and that movie magic. And there there was an aspect to the 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 joy. I mean, that was the key aspect to him was he had so much joy to be working on that stuff at the same time as you know. He was exhibiting his wonderful professional prowess. He was also beside himself that, like I was, that we got to work on such things. And that was that was during the dark times in the, in the early mid nineties for Star Wars, when mm -hmm. you know before the prequels. And you've told the story of how you know when you work there, you guys call each other magicians because you guys <laughs> got to partake in the ILM magic. But that's you know the things that we love from the original trilogy and all that magic got renewed. And it was because of people like you and Grant who worked at ILM and, and brought new ways to fabricate and incorporated new technologies to make those prequels so cool. Yeah. Um, he was also a really good judge of people. Grant really like, you know, he really, he got people, he paid attention and, that I, the thing that keeps on coming up is that sweet generosity of his. Um, it just, it just, it's the central thing I remember about him. And it was sort of the, the, at the, in the zoom meeting last night with friends, everybody had a story about Grant, like randomly showing up to pull an all nighter to help someone with their costume or to have hang their television or move them out of their house. Uh, you know, he was, uh, he was a, a stalwart friend. And it was lovely to sit there in that Zoom meeting with people like from all the different walks. I said to you just before we started the podcast, like I had I had two whole families with the guy and that's not all the families he had, yeah. right? I, I LM and Mythbusters with him. There's this whole contingent of friends in LA that I have met peripherally at different parties and other things. But like, you know, he touched so many, so many lives with that generosity and that, that's the other thing. Um, he was super, super generous and open with his information too. You know, if he had, if he had, he, he did not hoard his information. And in the movie business, sometimes 
people will um, will get their niche. They'll find a niche in a shop, and then they'll sort of jealously guard it from everyone else, and they won't talk about what they're doing because it's it, it, sometimes in the film industry that happens. Um, but not uh, not grunty. That's what um, Aaron Hay would call him, grunty. <laughs> I know for the for the show, you know what you and Jamie did, and and what you know, um, you know, Tori Grant and Curry did. They're usually separate in terms of the the productions. How often yeah. did you guys have to get a chance to get feedback, or you know, were you privy to any of that planning and how they plotted their stories? Um, it, it, uh, not on a very granular level. They, the the two teams ran for the the largest portion of Mythbusters, they ran as separate shops. Um, we definitely talked through early stories with the, with the team, uh, early development of stories with the team, but they really took their own direction. I mean, and Grant was the only one of us, of any of us who had an engineering degree. He was the only <laughs> actual scientist among the group. Uh, I, there are, there are some real highlights to the stuff that he did. Uh, I think of um, actually the uh, the 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 urine ice chunks falling out of planes and going through houses. Grant, Tori, and Carrie built a built an experimental methodology for that that proved it. It's one of the most definitively beautiful provings of a story that MythBusters ever made. And there is a there's a moment when they're in this. Uh, facility, this high-end wind tunnel facility that can get to sub-zero temperatures, and they're they've got a, a leak built into their artificial wing, and they've got urine building up, and it creates this ice ice chunk. At a certain point, the ice chunk falls off, and that confirms everything that they had posited about the methodological development. And Tori and Grant turn to each other with just this like lottery winning, like go. Yeah, that was a super, super high point. The other thing about Grant um, was, like me, he had a weak stomach, which meant that um, a lot of the ignominy he suffered on Mythbusters made it onto camera. So when they did Hangover Cures, poor Grant really suffered from that. When they did uh, when they did Shark Week episodes, oh, poor Grant. He hated fish touching his feet. It was like a <laughs> phobia of his, which is one of my favorite phobias I've ever heard of. He hated fish touching his feet. So the Shark Week episodes were really, they could be brutal on him. At the same time, you couldn't find a better sport to come on, to, to be on camera and just deal with that. And like, you know, the job as a TV host is to suffer the indignities of what is going on and be good natured about it so that the audience is, 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 is shown a view of what this is really like. And uh, I, I think that <laughs> Grant suffered a lot for that in the best way. And, and I think to the credit of, you know, the other producers as well as the, the network, the way the show was edited really put him on the same footing as everyone else, right? He wasn't shoehorned for just one specific role. He partook no. in all the fun activities. And then also to show, you know, what he was doing from an engineering perspective really rounded out all the different types of fabrication that you guys were doing, which, yeah. you know, for fans like me watching, it showed the possibilities of, you know, of, of what you could do uh, yeah. as a career path and as a hobby. And, and he was really wonderful at communicating exactly that, right? The, 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 the magic of doing that. When we, did, um, when we did Break Step Bridge, will soldiers marching in lockstep on a bridge cause a fatal harmonic that could cause an engineering structure to fail? Um, Grant ended up coming up with this idea of using a, a magnetically levitating linear actuator, which, and then, excuse me, and then programmed it to, to, to oscillate at this very specific, uh, at this very specific uh, uh, exponential increase of pressure. Um, like the whole perfect finale of that episode wouldn't have been possible had he not done that, but also the pieces of camera that he did so clearly communicated what he was doing. And I mean, that's the thing yeah. is like, oftentimes you see a, a highly technical, a, a, a technically brilliant person like Grant on television, um, the way it'll be cut is it'll be like, and then so-and-so did their magic and blah, blah, blah happened. Um, 
but with Grant, you got this wonderful explanation. You got taken in and shown how he was thinking through solving the problem, the difficulties they had in executing the solution, uh, and the joy in the success. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yet another one of the reasons that you know not being able to see people in person this year sucks so much, um, dude. And it, it's yeah, it's a reminder to try to reach out to your various connections, and you know, and it's like you said, you guys shared these multiple connections and, and paths together, and we had friends in the R two Builders Club, right? When we'd see yeah. photos on social media of them working on droids together, you know, at yeah. at. Uh, at at Fonco and, and we started uh, that Grant and Fawn and John Duncan and a few others of us at ILM started that group in 99 and we called it the Romeo Delta group uh R R D uh and I mean Grant was still working on his R2 a few weeks ago uh, Fawn had it behind him in the shop uh, last night um yeah I mean that again such a a joyful geek one of my favorite things to do would be to make super esoteric uh, movie and comic and animated comic book uh, geek references and then look across the room to notice Grant being the only one who got the joke and like, you know, share a little, share a little bit of that across the room. Oh, yeah. Um, I, you know, the, 2020 has been a difficult year by every, I mean, it's just, it, it's impossible to overstate how difficult this year has been. Um, and then you add to it, not just this, but within the last month, I, I also, we also lost uh, John Tessier, the showrunner for Savage Builds and Mythbusters Jr., who was also one of the producers on White Rabbit, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. Um, and then also my friend Michael Hawley, who ran the EG conference. These are all, and Grant, all, all passed within the last, four weeks uh it's just been uh it's just been a real roller coaster yeah yeah uh and and yeah it is re- like last night i was texting with adam rogers our friend from wired and he knew grant pretty well and we were like we want to go to a bar we want to go to a bar and kick back a few and share stories and the zoom is really great but it's just it is that is one of the hardest parts right now is not being able to get together with the mutual friends and 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 commiserate in person. Um, we have to we have to we have to uh, uh, be satisfied with the with the digital frame. Yeah, and his presence is gonna you know is, is we're gonna feel not being there and you know next time there is a Comic Con or a Dragon Con or yeah. a Star Trek convention and it it's also been really wonderful to see all the stories that people are sharing in the photos um, over the past, you know, decade and a half of, of these meetups, right. Where yeah. people have met him and, you know, whether it's at big conventions or just small casual dinners where a group of nerds will get together, um, you know, Bobek and him were great friends and they, you know, cosplayed together at Star Trek conventions. And it's just yeah. so, so awesome to see that. So so much yeah Bobic was on the was on the zoom last night hold on i'm going to show you a picture here uh here is uh grant and i with the whole team i'm going to share screen here oh you just uh you disabled screen sharing all right we'll post this photo we'll post i'll it. send it to you yeah. afterwards this is the whole team uh working on uh on Terminator 3, so in the middle with the goatee is Peter Rubin, the art director below him. There's Grant, me, and Fawn Davis. Uh, Brian Gernan, the model shop supervisor over on the far, on the far right of the photo. Uh, and then some of our, our colleagues, uh, basically we spent a, a couple of weeks doing motion control on that shoot. Uh, and Grant, like I said, did all the electronics and was so much fun to work with. We are all so young, even though Grant looks exactly the same as this photo as he did last week. Um, it's a, a real, it is a real unabiding loss and yeah. I'm still reeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing the stories, Adam. Um, yeah. I'm so sorry for that loss. And, and yeah. Um, one thing we also wanted to let people know is that, um, you know, because all the, 
the, how crazy the world is right now and some travel you have coming up, Adam. We're actually going to uh, take a little bit of a break. A hiatus for the podcast. Podcast. We're going to do a little bit of resetting. Summer break, we'll call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we know that we've covered so much over the past God, eight years of podcasting. and Eight years? Isn't Jesus that crazy? Christ. Yeah. Uh, we would love to know from you out there the segments or the the parts of the podcast that you like the most, you know, whether it's advice, whether it's yeah. stories, Q and a spoiler casts and come back uh, with a uh, renewed focus because we don't know how long we're going to be doing this remotely. And it's very different, Adam, you know, these past four months to do this on a zoom and not be able to get together in the cave. Uh, so, but it also offers different opportunities to maybe bring some guests in and chat yeah. with folks. Uh, but we will be back. Um, and, uh, other podcasts is continuing. So we'll be able to watch that and subscribe to that, but we'll let people know. Um, and we may throw in some old episodes here and there in the feed. So keep the podcast subscribed. Uh, but hopefully by the end of the summer, we'll be back and would love to we will. hear and, your, and your thoughts. When we ask for suggestions also, you might not have a suggestion as to subject that you want to hear about, but I'd also love, we'd also love to hear if you have just a favorite moment, a, a point at which the podcast made you go, whoa, I mean, you know, Joe DeRisi's interview stands out as a, wonderful, uh, a wonderful moment. Um, but I'd love to hear stories about some of your favorite guests on the podcast, some of your favorite moments, uh, places where you had a driveway moment, you had to keep on listening, those kind of things. Yeah. And we've, we've, you know, we've had, we've, we appreciate that you bring us into your homes and your workshops, even yeah. as background conversation. Uh, and we'll be back to do that in the future. We still have videos going up <laughs> on the site. Uh, we, you know, it's Comic-Con would have been happening a week from now, which is crazy to Jesus. think about. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, this is just tell the people you love that you love them. Tell them everybody, just do that. Tell them how important they are to you. Tell them something that they gave you that was really special. It's, I can't stress that enough that it's just been the most prevailing feeling I've had. It's like, <sighs> Gratitude, gratitude for the people, the gratitude for the people and the love and the family and the friends that we have, and it's really, really important to demonstrate that. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. We will see you soon, Adam. Yes. I'll see you yeah. soon. Love you, man. Love you, man. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.